Hello everyone, this is Will. This is Alex. Welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Oh boy, yeah. Mostly. Well, I, god damn it, man, this was... It, re- it really... Wow, this one is really... How do you remember really what was the last good. thing? Oh yeah, Unhinged. Is this better than Unhinged? <laughs> Dude, is there any competition there? <laughs> Remember when we just like had that like blah movie, which was unhinged. It was unhinged. You know, cause that was we, the blah movie. We gave it what like a four, a three, a three, I think, or, yeah. yeah, three. That's right. We gave Night Beast a four. Oh, that's right. But uh, this one, this absolute, is amazing. Absolute banger! Like, wow. Real quick. Yes, we got a. Sorry, we got a broadcast. Where you know if you found if if you're listening, please. Uh, if this is your first time listening, guess what? Like or subscribe wherever uh, you find us, YouTube or wherever. Please, you know, like right. us, subscribe us, whatever you got to do. Um, we would appreciate it. Yes, very much so. Um, and yeah, that's the quickest show we've ever done. There yep. you go. Uh, and we're I mean you know if we want to continue it we're on every other podcast site too. That's and, what I mean. Uh, every, wherever you follow and, us. Uh, go, wherever you hear Go this. on to YouTube and uh, you can subscribe there as well. And we have a subreddit. Just look up they mostly come out at night. There you go. Yep. Um. So yeah, this oh man, this was legitimately good. I'm sub, I'm shocked. So, this is so low rated. This is, I mean, it's... And the title is dumb. I was like... I get it. I was like, I, I get what they're going for. I mean, but... it's, once you see the movie, I get the title. I mean, it's, it, like, because the name of the movie is The Sender. Yeah. Which, I hear that, and I think, like, sci-fi. Well, right, me too. I mean, And that's yeah. kind of... It is kind of like a... Well, you get... It's like a get high a, concept, like, you get a lot. horror movie. It, it's like, I don't know, it's a weird movie where it, it doesn't really fit neatly into like any specific category no because there's there's horror elements right but there's but it's not like like ooga booga horror there's family drama there's like psychological i like this i like this movie because they got the tone like dead on oh the tone is the dead the tone is perfect and honestly i'm gonna give it credit where credit is due the cinematography in this and like the special effects are incredible. Like they are top notch. I want to give a quick mention because um this is weird. The director of this, yeah, years later. Now you know here's the thing. He he's got like other interesting movies on his filmography. Right. Well, which, of course, I which mean, may be on the podcast later. Yeah. But his most popular film. <laughs> His Battlefield Earth. Are you serious? Years he, later. He directed Battlefield Earth? They hired this man to direct the the memeiest of meme films. That is so odd. Of all time. That is so weird to hear. Because I like, know. You would never think in a million years after watching this that he directed Battlefield Earth. I know, and I don't know what the deal is. Like, I almost don't believe you, but I do believe you. Trust me, you can see it. Oh, I know. I can go look it up, but I, I'll trust you. I mean, I don't know. Like, but it happened. What the actual fuck? You know, the things we do for a paycheck, I guess. I don't I, know. Yeah, I mean, you know, when John Travolta approaches Gives you, you... millions of buckaroos. <laughs> and is just like, hey, let's make a movie about Scientology. You're just like, okay, let's do it. Let's make an hour and a half movie based on a 900-page book by the founder of Scientology. You just say, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I just, got Dutch angles you just, for you. You just go in. I got... <laughs> I got yeah, like, what's weird is, like, the director... Like it's night and day difference because this movie has none of the crappy like Dutch angles and like the cheap look, cheap like CGI look. That's the thing is like I don't I, know. I, well, it, it's funny because like some movies, like obviously, I mean, this does have like a studio behind it, but it's not like a million dollar epic. But like, call me a purist, but that just kind of goes to show that practical always looks better. Well, practical and like. Like, practical and good concepts. Like, real... Like, I'm sure Battlefield Earth, like, it. I've never read the book, obviously. There are people who like the book. By L. And they will tell you. I've heard it's pretty good. And they will tell you that the movie's bad. Yeah. But it's just like, I don't know, some movies, 
everything comes together and even though like you might have a low budget it still looks amazing yeah and this one does this is one of those movies where everything just looks it's practical it's on location all the locations they look lived in there's like lots of camera tricks and lighting really just brings and, it to life and the horror scenes are like very effective like they're, they're fantastic they're creepy um they get the tone right they get exactly what like you know exactly what's going on by the end of the movie the pacing's pretty well done because it's kind of a i'm not gonna lie it's kind of a slow burn like, but here's the thing here's the joy of 80s 80s genre film slow burn or not this is only an hour and a half long Right. Well, yeah, you're not waiting a ton of time for the big reveal, right? Like, you're not yeah. waiting, like, a long time for the ball drop. Yeah, you don't have to. And the, the the balls start dropping. Like, you get little snippets. And there's a scene halfway through that just... <laughs> they just go full throttle on that scene. Like, it's just like... And there's also a perfect explosion scene that I don't even mind that they showed three times. Dude, if, you know, it looks, I miss so much when they used to do that in movies. I just love when they just, like, have a building, and they're like, hey, the we're just going to blow it up. The whole thing. Yeah. Like, we got this house. Like, I miss the old school, like, just blow it up, like, you know, ending. And not just that, where they film, they have, like, three different cameras filming it. Oh, well, because... And you have I to mean, see... Uh, let's be honest. Like, you're a film director. It and looks you're blowing, cool. And you're blowing something up. It's going to look cool if you film it right. Sometimes the most important thing in, in filmmaking is vibe. <laughs> So the cinematographer <laughs> sets up perfect shots. You get all the lighting ready. And they're like, and you, okay, five. And you, <laughs> and you have three cameras running at the same time. You blow it up. You look at your film, and you're just like, this looks fucking awesome. And We're like, going to yeah, put cool. this three fucking times there in, you go. in our movie. <laughs> it, it's just like, here you go. The audience deserves it. I think we, we've gone a little off the rails here, it's but fine. it's fine. Because, I mean, there's not, there's not like a ton... I mean, okay, so there's a lot of stuff happening in the movie, but there's nothing there's nothing that we have to go, like, super deep into. No. Because there's, I mean, basically what it is is a guy, uh, let's, uh, well, I guess we'll get into it. Yeah. So a guy at the beginning of the film. He's sleeping in the woods. He's sleeping in the woods, and he wakes up when a truck drives by, and he goes to a beach and starts filling his, like, jacket and pocket with rocks. And he just walks And he just walks in. into, the, into the lake, and tries to drown himself and then he wakes up in a mental institution because it, it's like i mean they make it a point to show that like it's a crowded like lake and you know you can imply like someone called the police yeah so he ends up at like a state mental institution yes with a bunch of other people um are there and, and no I, one knows who he is i love this cast of characters we'll just can we go over them briefly so there's a Very, guy. I don't know, like a little, like things like this just make movies so much better. There's like three main ones, right? So I don't remember the name of the other two because I don't know if they ever say them. But one of them, they just call the Messiah because he thinks because he think he thinks he's Jesus, and he's just like. And he's like holier than thou. He like looks down upon everyone. Very, yeah, there's another guy who's um, I think they mentioned his name like once, but he basically thinks that the war in vietnam is still he's convinced that they've like what he's not like a pow he thinks he's like he's being like brainwashed or something that everyone is like lying to him about the war being over right because this is 1982 so and, yeah but he still thinks like all oh, the wars it's still going and then there's like a woman they kind of show here and there you're not sure what her like story is but like she just kind of like has this I don't know what is wrong with her, but they show her quite a bit. She just has like um, it's almost like OCD, I guess, or um, yeah, kind of like OCD. Because at one point she's always like picking at herself. And yeah, at like... one point she like writes on the mirror and everything. Yeah. So, um, but so this is our cast of uh the primary ones. I mean, there's lots of like other like background. I mean, yeah, there's lots going on, obviously, but like, um, and then you got this main guy, um, the Cinder. That's, and and you never actually you actually never know his name because they call him John Doe, but that's not his actual name. So, and the credits is even the sender. Yeah, they just call him the sender. Um, per film, 
he doesn't really have a name. Well, because, you know, like they they have a medical emergency because he tried to commit suicide, so they need the doctor there. But he has no, like, records on him. He has no ID. He has nothing. The doctor, like, the f- who, who's going to be, like, kind of the main character, um, shows up, and she starts talking to him, and that's where you find out he's got no... He doesn't know his name, well, and he's he like, doesn't really remember anything. He's, like, barely responsive. He's not talking to anyone, and he doesn't really remember, like, what's going on. He has, like, amnesia. And the only thing is, like, she says, like, well, you have to have, like, a father and a mother. He says he lives with his mother. He says he lives with his mother, but he won't expand on that. The only thing he mentions is, like, he doesn't have a dad. She's like, oh, so you're, like, Jesus? He's like, yeah. And then she, that's what she's like, well, there's a problem, because there's another person here who thinks he's Jesus, and that's, right. that's our Messiah guy. So she talks to him a little bit, and then he, they, I guess, like, it's the next day, and the nurse comes in, and she's like, you've sl- been sleeping all day. And then, like, he goes out, and, like, the v- the veteran guy is coming out, and he's like, he's like, man, like, you gotta tell me, like, you know, how are we doing in the war? You gotta, like, tell me, yeah. Like, and the, the guy's like, what do you mean? Like, we... The war's we, been over. The war's been over for years now. He's like, man, you're not one of them, too. I can't They got to you. They got to you. And then, like, you. he, like, starts running away, and he runs into the, back into the room, and the vet guy is on the, the bed, and the messiah guy is, like, just, like... He's crowd. still been the whole time, like, just kind of staring at him. Yeah. And so then, he like, looks at him. And the messiah guy gets, like, freaked out and, like, holds his neck. And, and then... like, backs up, and then we get the psychiatrist into entering the room. And then the messiah is just, like, standing there, like, completely still, and, like, she's just, like, talking to, like, the... It's kind of like one of the nurses. She's like, yeah, he won't... He won't take his pills because he thinks his head's, like, been severed. Like, he got well, guillotined. Yeah, like, he got guillotined, so if he moves his head, the, um... So, she does talk to the guy for a minute, but then it's Cause not... Because he, he says, like, you know, oh, that that guy, John Doe, like... Yeah. He did something. Well, remember, and then, like, you know, the scene after this is when she actually, like, ma- tries to make him snap out of it, but this, she talks to the guy for just a minute. I can't remember like, what they talk about, but it was something about... How he has to stay there for a while while they kind of observe him and figure out what's going on with him so he can leave. Yeah. Um, and kind of cure his amnesia. So he has to just rest there. That's basically all they're saying. Mm. And then it shows the Maasai guy holding his neck. And so she, like, she like walks up slowly behind him and, like, claps. So he, like, he, turns around. Yeah. But he, like, snaps right back and, like, holds his neck. And she's like, why didn't it fall off? And he's like, he's just taking his time. <laughs> and... But they're like, you know, they think everything's kind of, eh, it's just crazy people being crazy. She goes home. The doctor goes home. So she's sleeping, and then she wakes up and hears, like, a glass breaking. So and she, like, wakes up. and She like, wakes up, and then she goes and, like, you hear, like, this, like, it's like someone like jiggling a, rattling, um, yeah. a door handle. And you see her, like, door jiggling. So she goes out to look at the window and like the lights turn off and then she turns around and she sees the guy in her in house her, in her house in her room like holding at, at this point she's called um she's called the police yeah because she heard the glass breaking and everything obviously she's like someone's trying to break in and they're so like cars on the way she sees the guy like holding her necklace and like playing with it and then she calls the police back and she's like well never mind it's just one of my patients he probably got out like and they're like, okay, where did he, um, where did he break in? And she, she mentions that he took, like, a necklace. Because you see her go over to the bedside, where the necklace should be. And it's, it's not, not there. there. But the cops are like, oh, where did he break in? And she goes to, like, the living room. And all the windows are pristine. And she's pristine. like, they're like, listen, we checked the perimeter. Because they enter the house yeah. now. And they're like, we checked the perimeter. There's no broken glass. There's no sign of forced entry. And then they go into the room. And one of them sees. And he just instantly sees the necklace. Because she tells him what it looks like. And then the guy sees it. And they're just thinking, okay, you're just being crazy. Because she calls the hospital and is like, hey, um, like John Doe was here, like, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, like, yeah, I don't know what happened, but he's still in bed. Right. Yeah. Like he's still there. He's still here. Nothing's changed. She's like, what the hell? So, you know, it's the next day. And, and... like, things are kind of ramping up. Like, they're not really... The other people at the hospital aren't really convinced that he can be cured through, like, non... 
well, fucked up methods. Because she's talking to the main like head of the yeah. department, and you see behind her the guy holding his neck, right? So um, one of the nurses is like, "Do you want me to register the injection?" And she's like, "No." And they're talking about like the John Doe mm-hmm. and how he might be able to like project things. So she's she's kind of being convinced that he's doing something while he's asleep. There's some kind of like weird telepathy thing going on. Yeah. Um, like, but like, of course the main guy doesn't really believe her. And he thinks that basically, um, eventually like if, because she can't really get through to him of what the deal is with his amnesia and all that kind of stuff, that eventually they're just going to have to, uh, electroshock therapy. Him, yep. To kind of like kickstart his brain. Basically to turn him into a vegetable. Yep. Um, so she like, She's like, no, I'll, I'll register the injection. She opens their fridge, and there's cockroaches over everything in and it. And plus, at this point, the the head guy is kind of like, you seem, like, kind of tense. Like, what's what's the deal? So she, like, she like freaks out, and he's like, and she he's she he's like, what were you looking for? And she's like, well, I was looking for a vial. And he's like, it's right in front of you. It's right here. Because he opens it, and no there's cockroaches. Nothing. So then they kind of deliberate more, and the doctor s- decides he's just going to do electroshock therapy. Well, before this, um, well, yeah, the th- there's a scene where our guy, the center, is like walking around, and he looks in like it's like the visitors' room. Oh right, yeah, and he sees like a woman like smoking a cigarette, and he just kind of immediately like, and he goes to like the orderly, and he's like, "Why is that woman here?" And, and the orderly just kind of like. We kind of notice because she doesn't even look. She's just kind of like doing like filing or whatever, and she's just like, "Oh, it's just a visitor, whatever." Um, you want you can talk to her like if you want. And so he like Fitting. starts. He like goes in and like sees her, and then like starts running away because she tells him like, because he's like, "How did you know?" She's like, "I." He's like. Don't you? Like, she basically says like it's the, it's his mom. Like I've always known. I think yeah. Like I always, I, know, I always know where to find. We have you. a special connection. Like you have to come home. Yep. You have to come home with me. He runs away. And then doesn't the psychiatrist girl see her in the office now? Yeah, because uh, I'm pretty sure there's a scene where she talks to him and he mentions like seeing her. Yeah, he saw. And his then mom. she goes to her office and the mom's there. And she talks to the mom for a second. And the mom... I don't know how they did this, still. Well, there's a quick... Well, they talk, and the mom's like, are you're seeing things, aren't you? Like, things aren't... You're well, hallucinating. And, like, you know, per the norm, she's like, okay, well, like, can we... Let's continue this conversation, but let me call in. Well, first she's like... Well, she, then she tells, like, so she I've been, to... like, deal... I've been... I've been like dealing with this for my whole life with him and right. that she's like do you give me a second she's like, like give me a second i'm gonna like so she can prove to the other people and this is actually happening that she's not the only one seeing this kind and of so stuff. as she's on the phone it like pans up and like it like pans across her and then up and like it slowly pans up and you see the mom is gone well it's funny because like it's well, like she's there at the start of the frame because she's behind the, the woman and then as it slowly pans to the woman you still see kind of the mom, and then it like starts to pan up, and then the mom's gone. And then she's and then, gone. It, this is all one shot. It's all in one shot. It's not like if so, like they had like the actress like crawl on. Crawl I'm assuming that's what they the did. Sofa, yeah. But good job. Um, but yeah, and then she, there's no one there. She goes and like talks to the orderly. The orderly is like, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah. She talks to the security guard. She's like, there's a woman in a blue dress, and he's like, I don't, I didn't see anybody. She runs outside. And she sees, like, her, like, she's, like, walking into, like, the parking lot. Mm-hmm. She runs there, and you just see, like, a truck driving away with nobody. No driver. Behind the wheel. She follows so, it. She follows it. It's, it's like, it's kind of crazy because they play this, like, really, like, eth- dreamlike, ethereal, like, dreamlike, like, song. Like and there's, synth music, and yeah. Like there's no ambient so, n- noise, so there's no cars. Nothing. There's nothing, and it's like empty streets, and it's like yeah. fog everywhere. It's like, it's very dreamlike, which they drive, is totally on purpose, and it looks fucking awesome. It's great. It and they drive so under like this. Good. It's almost like, it's like a tunnel kind of thing. It's like under like a road. It's like an overpass, basically. But... And there's like all this like fog effects and stuff. And, and like... she's like driving, and then the truck like disappears, but she sees the guy standing there. Oh, she also sees before this the license plate of the truck. Oh yes, it's uh, Luke. 
Luke something. It's a it's Bible a, it's verse. A, yeah, it's a Bible verse. And so she sees the guy holding a sign that says 1963. Yeah. And um, he, she just passes him and then, like, kind of stops. It's the guy. Luke 131. Yeah. Um, and so she gets out and she asks the guy, like, like what's going on? No, she um, she drives oh, no, forward. Sorry, yeah, yeah. And the... The truck. truck pulls up behind, like, zooms behind her. And it stops. And the guy gets in the truck, and then it starts giving chase, and she, like, zooms away, so that, like, it's like a, this big chase and sequence. And it's like, it's like an inch away from her. Yeah, the whole time. And she keeps going, and then gets to an intersection, and, like, a truck just kind of barely clips so she, her. Yeah, they clip, they clip her, and then she, like, starts screaming, and she um, then talks to the doctor... Because she goes back to the hospital and, like... And is trying to convince him again that he has some sort of telepathy. That, like, he's able to project... Like, when he dreams... His, his nightmare is in dreams. Yeah, like, his his nightmares become reality when he sleeps. Yeah. And he can, like, put, force it upon other people. And after this... <laughs> they're, uh... The 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 doctor decides we're gonna electroshock him because this is all pointless. Yeah. And you know they hook him up for the electroshock therapy. And like sh she's like trying to like stop them before they do. And the doctor is um, she's like running and running and she's like oh my god like because she knows what's gonna happen if something they like, crazy gonna happen electrocute him and we we in the audience know something crazy gonna happen so they're setting him up and they're like you won't feel a thing like we're just gonna turn this on and like the, they put the like thing on his head and then puts the thing on his head and the doctor like puts up the amp amps and then presses the button because oh. he basically like they knock him out first and then they put the amp on him. And then as soon as the amp turns it's on... It's kind of like in slow-mo, but like... Everything's in slow-mo, but and, everyone's getting, like, launched. So, so the woman that's holding the, like, electroshock, like, headband thing um, is, like, l lifting up in the air. Like, her hind legs come up behind her. There's um, a guy who gets, like, lifted up and thrown across, like, a like a table. Another of... woman gets, like, thrown into a corner. And then the main guy... Like gets literally lifted. just like like gets front flipped into a fucking glass pane, <laughs> and I love a good dummy shot, but like because oh, they just great. they just like throw this like this dummy dressed exactly like him with the same wig, just throw him right at a, like a glass pane, and he like, he falls over it. like a computer and everything. Oh, it's so cool! And then you see like like the guy, the Messiah, is like in a shower. And his neck is just bleeding, like profusely bleeding. And then the vet guy um, is he like, it's back like the in, war back in Vietnam. Like, there's like there's a dead body, and there's like gunshots. It's all fucking crazy. And, and then the woman is like has wrote. I can't remember what she wrote. She wrote she, something on this mirror, and she's like she's like slamming her head against the mirror, <laughs> and like you're just like whoa, like holy shit. And so the woman like runs in and like takes him off the the. Um, electroshock machine and then everything like like reverses reverts back to normal but everyone's kind of like freaked out everyone's like because because they saw all of that well because they were like basically living in a nightmare and then they all like at this point they're all like okay okay you're right you're right and they basically talk about how like what, what the, i guess where the title comes from is like they talk about how when like a mother and a son at they have like a certain like link yeah when the son is born but it only usually lasts for like a few years at best and that now we have like the first case of an adult sender basically well and this is like kind of starting to imply that the mother did something to like create that bond for like until he was an adult yeah and so, like, she wanted to keep that connection with him by any means necessary. And it, and we do mean any means necessary. I also yes. forgot. There is a... We're just zooming through this, but there is a scene where she, like, has him, um, before all this, she she has, like, a deck of cards. Oh, right, yeah. And, and he's, like, 
And she's like guessing she's all the cards. She's trying to prove that he's like he's got something. Yeah. So she says she literally does the opposite of every single card. Uh, ten out of ten, and she's like, she's like, well, because you think like, oh, she's gonna, like, at first you're you're thinking like, oh, is she gonna like prove that like he's reading her mind or something? Because every time she's she pulls up a card, it's wrong. Yeah, and then eventually she's like, it's black, wrong. It's red, wrong. Black, wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And eventually you kind of get that like, oh, he's like. He's Sending. basically bamboozling her. Yes. And it's the wrong answers. And then she says, like, how, what is the chance that, like, ten cards in a row are wrong? And not a single one of them. Slim. Super slim. Oh, yeah. Because you'd guess at least one. There's also, um, because one of the things that kickstarts the whole, like, uh, electroshock therapy thing is there's a scene where she's in, like, a bathroom. Oh, right. We did. God, we have been blasting through sorry we bad but she's in a bathroom and she's like you know turns on the water washes her face and then she looks I like up. this scene I'm, I'm i'm glad we went back to it because it's fucking good we would have had to go back to it because it was in my head um but she's like washing her hands she looks up her whole face is covered in blood yep and like the mirrors starts like bowing and then like it cracks and starts bleeding and all the mirrors in the bathroom crack and start bleeding it's awesome Yep, and then like one of the nurses goes in after, and everything's fine. But she she's running around, and like you don't know what's happening. But then she runs into like the bathroom for all the patients, and she sees our guy slicing his wrist. Yeah, with a a, a broken glass from like the bathroom mirror. Mm -hmm. There you go. So the, yeah, that's what kickstarts the uh, electroshock. Because that's when they're like, oh, he's still suicidal. Yeah, there's no help. Right, we need to shock him. Um, so after, let's see, where were we? Now we're, now we're back on track. So this is after the electro shop. So they're all, let's see, they're all kind of deliberating on like what to do and like how to like solve like this dilemma. And one of the ideas that the doc, the main like guy has is to basically like drill a certain part of his brain yes. so that it like, he, he's still like technically normal, but it's going to like permanently kill his ability to like dream or have nightmares any kind of thing like that and then this is like little by little where you find out what that bible verse is about right because it's how it's about like let me here i, I got it pulled up so luke 131 basically this is a like a, a condensed version but it's you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him jesus and you get you get the understanding that that's the mom. Well, that's he, literally what she, she was literally trying to create Jesus, or in, in, in her own weird like way. It's yeah, because like, it's, it's, it's like, not as like religious as it sounds. Like it's, but she's like that's you, what she thought because she, eventually she was trying to create like that connection, like you know, not snap that connection between. Because as it kept going, and again as like all of his crazy nightmares and shit kept manifesting themselves. She like genuinely believed that he he's, was like, he is the Messiah. Yeah. And, but as a result, she essentially like, you know, locked him up in the house forever. Right. And then wouldn't let him leave. So like... wouldn't let him leave. And, and, and that's when like, he kind of starts opening up and talking about how, like when he thinks of her, he, he smells like gas there's a there's a whole scene where he's like the doctor like goes home and you hear like this squeaking noise oh yeah and he goes she goes like because she's making like a like tea and uh the mom calls like her. she's like oh i'm making like i'm just have uh, something boiling on the stove can you give me your number because the mom is like you have to let him go you have to let him go she's like can you okay like can you quickly like give me the number you're calling from? And then the mom hangs up and she hears the squeaking more, so she goes into her room and literally finds the guy dead, just cover like her whole room is just covered in rats. And there's even like a shot of like it... like rats coming out of like a it's like a fake body mm -hmm. mouth. That is so fantastic. It's so well done. And then she like freaks out and she goes back to like the phone to like call the doctor saying like 
So she she looks at she sees a number um, written on the wall. So she writes it down. So because she knows she's he, in her dream, basically yeah. in his dream, in his nightmare, so to speak. So she writes down the number really quick, and then she calls the office, and she's like, she's like, he's having another dream, and then <laughs> I uh, love this dude. So she's like, he's having another dream, and then one specifically of specifically, or- he's having a nightmare. Yeah, John Doe's having a nightmare. The orderly, like, it shows a quick snippet, and. <laughs> Like, she's on the phone, like, with this annoyed look, and there's just, like, a guy floating in the background. There's, like, and a going insane. fighting with another person. There's, like, just a bunch of shit going on behind her. She's like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> I just... I just love the, the the deadpan, like, yeah, no shit. Well, it's funny, because the shot lasts, like, two seconds, and you know that, like, they, they did that on purpose. Yeah. And I just love, like, the little moment of, like, comedy... Just a little, little quick snippet. Does she say no shit or no kidding? No kidding. Yeah. She's like, yeah, we like no kidding. We know. <laughs> God, but and then they go back, and so then she finally she gets the she has the number now, and uh, they talk to him, and they're like, hey, like, do you think you want to call your mother? Like, yeah. Like, are you afraid to? And he he's like, yes, because you know I had to, like I had to get away. I had to get away from her. Um, then they mention the phone number and he's like, I don't know. I've never seen that. So they do try and call the phone number and it's a disconnected line. It's disconnected. But don't they trace it? Um, eventually find the house. They find it. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they trace it and then they send like cops to like find out because that's how they find the cabin. Right. But it's like, I mean, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. And everything's, and eventually there's a scene where everyone's like hanging out in like the, like the rec room or whatever. Yeah. Um, all the patients and uh, like they're all crowding around the dude. And... Well, because th- they're all like playing cards together. And right. there is like a, you know, there, there's people playing ping pong and there's like the ball bouncing yeah back and forth and then it like gets he, louder and louder so here's like this like the, the the banging noise of like the ball just keeps getting louder and louder and he goes like runs out of the room and then kind of goes outside and sees like that like weird it, it's basically like his mom's pickup truck just parked out yeah. there well, remember this is where he smashes the tv yeah because yeah. he runs back and everyone's kind of like crowded around the TV. And there's like a report on like, and it has his like, like an artist rendering of his face. But it's like the reporter is like telling him like, so and so like, you know, like he needs to go back home. Like his mom needs him back home. If you have any information, blah blah blah. And then and if you have any information, I just like they could try and change the channel. And the Messiah guy is like, Mama's boy, and they try to change the channel. And, and then it just keeps repeating. If you have any information, it's the same thing. And the guy goes ballistic and tries to like break the TV. Like he starts unplugging it, and then he throws it across the room, and then kicks it. And like he slant. starts beating the shit out of it, and he it like, does not turn off. He's like, he's like total like office spacing and the, the fuck out of that. TV. The way they film it is so great because all the lights go out. Well, it's also like this destroyed TV, and I don't. Again, like movie magic, but like they kept the screen on and it keeps blinking. Like, if you have any information, you have any information, information. and like, but they also show like all the other people in there and they're all just losing it. Well, and the guy's like, Mama's boy, Mama's boy, and everyone's like jumping around and you get like all these close ups of everyone's faces and it's just like super, like the way it's filmed is like. So the guy freaks out and he like gets in the truck. Well, no, there's a. Don't forget. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. That's not what happens. Yep. Um, he starts the mama's boy, like the Messiah guy, gets in his face. Yeah. And he they like start pushing. Oh, and the guy like he like he like uppercuts him. He like, f- like he like, palms him. Palms he, like, him in the like, face, and his head pops off. Pops off, and you just get like this shot of like a headless body, kind of like ambling around. And the now the guy runs. And he, he runs. Like, he runs past the cop and like, it's like a security guard. And the security guard's like, "Hey, hold on." 
Well, then and you everything's see... like dark and illuminated and red. And then he looks well, then at he, something. He looks at something and looks horrified and, and like, shoots and shoots and like. Um... And then the guy like goes like it's like the front desk area, and everyone's like, "Where's the? Where happened to the lights?" And then and all the lights blink back on. And everything's back to normal. Everything's back, except the guy, um, the security guard, shot. The Messiah guy. When he's like, like, because she goes, because it's our guy kind of goes outside, and then mm-hmm. the girl goes back in to the what to see what happened, and the cops like the security guard. I swear, he, like, had I no swear head. he had no head. It was like it was horrifying. I, it was horrifying. <laughs> he was just walking towards me, <laughs> and then like she tries to go back outside, and she sees the guy uh, getting in his truck and driving away. Not quite. After the. Um, surgery thing. That's when that happens. Is it after the surgery thing? Yeah. Okay. Because at this point, they start giving him, like, drugs. Yeah, my bad. To, um, basically get him to go the fuck to sleep. But he's not taking them. But he's not taking them. He's just throwing them away. And eventually, they decide to go ahead with this, like, operation to drill into his head. And they set him up. They cut off, like, a... They're like a... The guy's, like, observing him from, like, a window. They cut off, like, a slice of his like skull or whatever and they yeah. start drilling him well and then he like he like free he like, starts, like mommy and he like starts screaming and like everything just goes up in flames and like every like everyone everyone runs out and like just fucking flames everywhere and it's it's really cool because like his body like just like starts like standing like, up standing yeah. up in in the bed and the the main doctor like comes in and she looks and the bed is just empty yep and the guy is like he's out of the bed right now, so he that's what this is when he runs away. Right, okay, this and is yeah. In all the chaos, he runs out and gets in like the truck. The old truck and then drives to the cabin. He drives to the cabin and now when he's driving, um, his mom is in the passenger seat. Yep. So doesn't the woman go after him, right? We we did right before they, they tried that surgery, that's when the um because one of the reasons that they do that is that's when the sh- the cops show up and that's when they tell them, um, yeah, we found out like, like his mom's dead basically. She's been dead for five days, which is right when he um attempted suicide. She like she blocked up all the windows and they stuffed towels underneath all the cracks and like turned on the gas. Well, that's the other thing, is that's when you find out that um because they're like, well, there's another thing um the all the fingerprints on the like valves for the gas weren't hers they were his they were his so, she, so they're saying that so he, he um yeah, hell, like he had to escape and killed, and he her. killed her and at that's what that's basically at this point they're like okay he's fucked in the head and we need to do this yeah we need to go after him so so he goes with his mom who's dead <laughs> And then, like, he's in the house, and... He's turning on... He turns on, like, the gas stove, and... And he has, like, a candle with him. And he leaves the candle right there, and goes up to, like, a bedroom, and that's... Like, his mom is just, like, cradling him, like, go to sleep, little baby, and... And so he goes to sleep, and he wakes up, and there's, like, carbon... Is it... Well, he wakes up, like, and the mom's not there, and he can't... He can't breathe? Because of the gas. Yeah. Um... So he's like struggling, and then the doctor shows up, and she's also like she like tries to pull him out, and like is like she sees the mom like and like drops him down the stairs. Yeah, and she sees the mom, and like he's like telling him she's not real, like you can't, like, you, like she's not real, she's not there, and the mom's telling him like you can't, like we're meant to be together. You, you, just and go to sleep, go to sleep, and everything will be okay. And so like the doctor's trying to like pull him out. And then she like almost passes out, and then the two, they get them all out because like like the other doctor like shows up. The other doctor shows up in a cop, and they help her out, and they finally get out, and um, they get to like the ambulances, and they're all like you know huddled up, and boom, and then it shows the gas because the whole the time candle. they're dragging them out, you s- they keep showing like the candle next to the um, stove, the gas stove, just kind of telling you like this is it's coming. It's coming. When it's like a cabin on a lake, so like you get this real like when they blow it, like so like obviously it blows up, and so when you get this like huge inferno, right? But it's like it's mirrored on the lake, so it looks like this fucking like it's like a, it's it, it's great. 
It's like dreamlike. I'm guaranteeing they meant that. It's well, it's just like it like blows up like in both directions. We have a cabin like, on the wood in, in the woods on a lake. We're gonna blow it the fuck up. Oh, and it's gonna look fucking awesome. And, and we're does. gonna use. We're gonna show you three angles of this thing blowing up with. Oh, the, they were very proud with of like the parts of the cabin flying into the you camera. You know what? Good for them because it did look awesome. It's fantastic. I would show this before. <laughs> Because uh, it looks <laughs> fucking cool as shit. It's fantastic. But that's, like, done with. And he, like, you see them, like, watching, like, a recording of him talking. And he, like, explains everything. Like, so, like, he's got his memory back. He explains that, yeah, the mom, like, because she thought he was, like, the chosen one or whatever. She didn't want to part with him. And locked him away. She locked him away. Didn't let him leave. All this kind of stuff. He had to escape. Et cetera, et cetera. So they're they're like, like, well, okay, his um, he's cured. His amnesia's gone, so they let him go, and he leaves. And you think everything's fine because, like, he like says goodbye to all the patients, um, gives one of them a kiss weirdly, and then uh, talks to the doctor. And she's like, "Well, like, you know," they both like say their goodbyes. And he everything. shakes her hand, like, "Thank you." He gets in the truck, and and it like. Yeah, you know, it's just pans showing over. him. It's showing him directly on, and then it slowly pans over. And guess who's in the passenger seat? The mom. Mom. Freeze frame end. End. And then you can make your own, uh, make your own deductions. Well, let's just say most likely the nightmare isn't over. Well, that's the thing is like, because I mean, it's one of those things where it, with that ending, like you kind of have to like think in your side, like interpret it, because you can almost interpret it like. At this point, he's just accepted that, like, the mom is going to be, like, a permanent yeah. thing right. in his life. Well, that's he, how I see it. Well, he finally, like, let her let her comfort him. Yeah, that's how I see it. Because then the beginning... he's not, like, horrified. Because when she first sees... When he first sees her, he's horrified and he runs away. Yeah. But when he sees her in the cabin, he like lays down with her and lets her like lets her cradle him. Yeah. And so I think you're right, like where he's just kind of accepted it and like and because obviously it's... he's not gonna have any more remorse for And because it's like something where I mean it's not because it's like paranormal, you can't just snap out of it. Right. So he's just like Well and he does he does um honestly he he like they say it in a quick snippet where he only like allows people. He only projects to people who have threatened him. When he when he feels when he feels threatened. Yeah, when he feels scared or threatened is when he like projects out, which is why both times he tried to operate on him, you get the mm-hmm. most insane. Yep. Like projections. I mean, honestly, like it's kind of crazy. This movie only has like two deaths not even two deaths I, like the other the messiah guy didn't even die it literally no. the mom is the only one that died really and she dies. doesn't even die on camera yeah and it's pretty damn effective yeah i mean well, that's the thing it's it's because the implications of like having these kind of nightmares like just projected on you where you think it's actually happening yeah could really fuck like your head yeah and then the whole thing about like oh it's it's about a guy who's like been horribly abused by his mom because of what she thinks he is. Yeah, and like locked away. And, and... at the end of the day, like he has no choice but to like live with it almost. Right. He lets it become him. I'm just saying, it's good. It, it's, it's good shit. This movie is fucking awesome. I love it. It's and high, you high... could take this film right now, today. You could take this film. And stamp like the A twenty four logo on it, and release it into theaters as is, and like people would dig it. I do like a yeah four K restoration because we have to watch it's it's a good one, but like it's not full. I mean, it's not four K, but yeah. I mean, it is HD and it does the movie looks great. But you could like it's like I don't know it's a it it deserves more credit because I think it's really high like concept and they actually pretty much stick the landing the whole time it's really good like i don't have really any complaints about it because like i really don't it's just it's just entertaining it's a really cool like interesting idea that they actually like fully thought out yeah and it actually works someone 
like a like, projecting like, nightmares that's pretty <laughs> creepy like i'm i don't know like you know it's like nightmare on elm street mild but yeah like, but like but the person involved is not like a bad like a bad guy right just a, an abused it's like, like he has no choice yeah just i love this movie it's great this is great like this, this is the kind work. of like i don't know this is the kind of like weird shit that you just find <laughs> right well and i love that's why i love this podcast honestly because it's like i would never watch this movie without i wouldn't even podcast. known it existed and now our viewer our listeners can actually like watch it too like you can find this you should like it's I mean, you can rent it. You can rent it pr- probably anywhere, and if it's the HD version, tr- trust me, you're gonna enjoy it. Like if you like kind of like A24 films or any like high concept indie horror where it's like kind of pushes the envelope of what like horror can be, what is real and what's not. I and... think this is a really good one because like it's like yeah, it's a slow burn, but it's so effective. It's like they plus it's still R rated. Well, honestly, less is more in this yeah. case because, like, they still like, man, they like, like they they nail that whole like ethereal like like dream state because you like at the end at the end of the movie you're just like you're almost thinking like what's real and what's not yeah because they like it's really like fucks with your head of like are they dreaming this or yeah. are they not dreaming this like what what is going on is yeah like is he just making them think it's all fine and dandy. Yeah. Or not. Right. And it's like... Is he projecting that? And, and it's not like... Because there's some movies where it's like, oh, it's it's all in your head. But it's like, no, it's just... That's just a plot well, hole. Well, they could have gone with like a feel-good ending. Like he's all fixed and he just drives off into the sunset. I almost thought they were. And like, I was almost going to be like, you know, after all he went through, like, good for him. But then at the end, they nope. just had to... They're just like, nah to throw that in there They're like nah this is not a good ship or ending. boom mommy wins <laughs> yeah you can't just se- you, you can't sever the bond of a of a son and a mom so to speak just like acting on point cinematography great directing awesome like there's just the music like yeah. every special effects like everything works it's great i don't know like how this film is so low rated maybe it's just because people haven't seen it I don't know. Maybe it's expectations. Maybe something else. But or maybe I mean, there's something wrong with our brains now that we've watched like a hundred, almost like a hundred and almost two hundred of these movies. So now, like our standards are I, no. You know what? No, because uh, this is actually a really good movie, and you should watch it. No, trust so me. Our like, standards I, I've, aren't, our standards aren't low. This is just a really good movie. Yeah, like I've seen other horror movies as well recently, and I'm sorry. This is this is better. It kind of gave me, um, uh, I guess one movie I could kind of compare it to is maybe Oculus. Yeah. Because it's kind of like, it's kind of like Oculus, but like, I would say it's better than Oculus. I think it like has a better... I mean, I, listen, I can tell you this, visually, it's visually, this is way better than well, Oculus. Because Oculus does go for that special effects, like CGI. Oh, just, Oculus just has that like... That, like, gray monotone-like thing. But in, like, okay, so, like, I'm just saying in, like, tone yeah. and, like, kind of concept this is almost, if I had to compare it to, like, a yeah. modern horror movie, I'd probably compare it to Oculus. But, like, it's its own thing, honestly. Like, it's not anything like Oculus. I'm just, like, yeah, kind of, if, like, if people want to know kind of what it's like, it's kind of like Oculus in a way. Um, just because it kind of fucks with your head and yeah. like, it makes you think like, oh, like what's real, what's not kind of thing. Yeah. Um, which is great, actually. I like I like when horror mm-hmm. movies do that. Um, and yeah, this is just a good horror movie. It's really good. Like th- this is probably going to be added to my rotation. I actually might buy this. Yeah, this is fantastic. Um, I think it's worth a watch and I think it's worth buying, honestly, if you like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow, shitty to pretty. I think we just like stated it right there, but. I mean, look, I mean me, it's a 10. I don't... For, like, sheer entertainment and, like... Because, again, entertainment-wise, how... like, it, it's the right kind of slow burn, so I'm not I'm not bored at all, and it, it does stick the landing, and, like you said, all the parts acting. 
writing cinematography. everything just kind of like comes together perfectly and because and of that like i'm sorry it's a 10 it's a 10 like it's it's a 10 out a 10 out of 10 because like like when you compare I, this to something like unhinged or night beast which we get rated night beast higher than unhinged so i mean really think about that but this yeah this is a this is well, a film. I would argue Night Beast is more watchable than Unhinged, but well, more things happen. In but Night if you Beast. had to pick out of the three, please, for the love of God, watch this one. Please watch this. Because, Don't go um, watch Unhinged. It's not worth it. This is a film. This is a. This is like really good filmmaking here. By like, a, yes, it's by a studio. Yes, they probably had money behind it. But like, even if it was an indie film, I think the concept they could still stick it. Oh yeah, because the concept is just really cool. And so something like this, you don't need a, you don't need buckets of cash to fill this off, and that's I, the joy. I just love when directors and like a whole film crew have like this really cool idea, and then they like create it, and it actually works. Yeah, like that is cool to see. Yeah, because like, not a lot of people would make this kind of movie. No, like no one would think of this kind of concept and make this. Right. Right. They'd make something like Oculus, or they'd make something like. You know, like a popcorn horror movie. Yeah. But this is like, it just kind of like exceeds your expectations and what you think like a Paramount produced like well, 80s horror movie about a guy who can send his nightmares. What I appreciate about this is that it feels like a horror movie made for grownups. Yes. Oh, it's a very adult film. Like it, it's not, it just feels very mature. And that's like, that's what I appreciate. It, it doesn't... I mean, and don't get me wrong, I, I do have a lizard brain, so I do appreciate some nonsense, you know. Obviously. Which is why I love slasher movies. But I do appreciate that it's like a horror film made for grown-ups. With, like, it's slow, and it, there's adult themes, and, like, big concepts. You have to, like, appreciate piece, it. You have to put it together, and you're like, oh, wow, that's really dark. You have to piece it together, and it's not, like, always, like, like, like it's not like spoon fed to you it's it's for adults yep that's what i liked about it too but yeah like i don't know i could praise it all day but yeah like, just go watch it watch it i know you've heard us describe <laughs> the whole movie watch it but i guarantee you our description will not give it justice because no, you, have like, to see you, this stuff. you need to see it to believe it um yeah i'm probably gonna go buy this this is yeah it's worth it. Um, wherever I can buy it. So. <laughs> but yeah. So go watch uh, The Cinder. Please. And um, for They Mostly Come Out at Night, this has been Will. This has been Alex. And we'll talk to you all later. <laughs> bye bye. Oh. Ooh, lad. <laughs> I'm going to dream well tonight. <laughs>